Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. I thought today we would take a look at where our market is today as we approach the month of July 2024. Now, at the end of this, I'm going to be showing you, well, not the end of it, but throughout the entire video, showing you all of our current numbers on what's going on around the Phoenix market. <laughs> and I'm not making any predictions. I'm hoping that you can make a prediction for yourself because I'm not the one writing a check. <laughs> so, so I'm going to share with you some numbers to show where we're at with our inventory, where it's trending, what's going on with prices, um, how much seller contribution is going on, how many price changes are we seeing. And if you're really into data, you're going to love this. If you're not into data by now, you've probably already clicked away. But thanks for jumping in anyway. I appreciate it. Let's take a quick look here. We always start with active listings. And our active listings right now, Last week were 18,183. This week, 18,209. Went up, not even 100. So active listings have kind of stayed steady. If I look at what I track on the seven-day moving average, new listings are starting to creep up this week, but they're being followed by new contracts. The difference between the two has actually jumped up to 78% from 74%. Why do I mention that? Well, the last time we saw prices really come down was we were 60 to 65%. So that's one measurement, not all, but a measurement of how much the homes that are being listed are being absorbed. Another measurement, and the big one to look at right now is our months of supply. And you can see in our market right now, we're sitting at 2.3 months of supply. Now, those in the know tell us that normal is four to six months supply. I think if we got the four month supply right now, based on what we're used to and seeing in this market, we would panic and go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of houses. But we're not seeing that yet. Number of price changes per week. They are hovering at about 2,202. You can see in comparison that they've gone down a little bit just the past couple of weeks. Those tend to change always on the first of the month or the end of the month. So I imagine when we look at these numbers a couple of days from now, we'll see that number pop back up a little bit. People always make decisions based on the calendar for some reason. So, but it's not a huge number. If we take a look here, <laughs> excuse me, average list price per square foot, this one's a little telling. We're at $364.65. This is what people are asking for their homes. And that's about what they were asking back in January. So we went through this optimistic period right here where people said, well, I think it's going to be a good year. Let me ask this for my home. Let me ask, let's see, the price up here was $389. And if we look at that and say that that was week seven, then we go back here and we start looking at, let me get rid of my magnifying glass here for just a moment, bear with me. We go back here to April 28th. Week seven would be, oh, second week of February. In February, you notice we started getting a lot more price cuts. It started growing up from there. So February is about the time when people start figuring out where they think the rest of the year is going. They didn't get that optimistic bump in January. They go, well, we better start pricing a little more realistically. And that's what this chart is telling us. Now we look at year over year percent change in list price per square foot. It's showing us our list price this month, 2024 to the same month, 2023, and we're down 2.8%. So home prices are coming in lower this year than they were last year on the asking price. We take a look here at change in monthly average price per square foot by price range. And this one's a bit of an eye chart. It's all over the map. So you can look here and say over 10 million. Well, I don't even know how many homes that was that we sold, but their monthly average price per square foot my list price range is down 7.4%. Again, this is how much people are listing their houses for. In the 500 to 600,000 range, they're listing them 4.3% higher than last year, according to this chart. Doesn't kind of jive with some of the other charts I showed you, but I thought I'd share that anyway. Monthly average sales price. This is going to refresh on me here. We're sitting at, let me scroll over here just a moment so I can see it. We're sitting at 558,000 up 7% year over year. So home prices 
on homes that have closed are up 7% year over year. You can see that when interest rates first popped up in 2023 and 20, yeah, 2022, 2023, that prices average sales price dropped down year over year comparison. Take a look here at closings per month above list price. This one has dropped dramatically. The activity is considerably slower and the bidding wars are, I wouldn't say non-existent, but the bidding wars have really slowed down to 17%. Get back to the silly season, 61% of the homes sold for more than what they were asked for. And that's what I call 2021. So, and remember all the crash bros are out here telling you not to buy right about here. They're still telling you not to buy. I'm not telling you to buy. I'm just saying, be careful what you look at. And it's saying here that the average price in the 450,000 range, 18% of homes are going over list, 300 to 422%. The most aggressive one is 200 to 300,000. Good luck finding one of those. So 23% of those are going above their asking price. When you get to 800, 900,000 is only 12%. And then the number of how much they're going over list price is averaging about $5,000. So it's not doing much. And most of that is in some cases in competitive areas. And I'll show you which ones those are. People will sometimes offer over asking so that they can ask for concessions. Concessions towards closing costs, help me buy down the rate, etc. That's where most of that comes from, if not all of it. Now, if you take a look by city here, you can see that Chandler still leads the march here with a Cromford index of 194, went down 7% for the week, but anything over 110 is considered a seller's market. And so we're in a seller's market with from Paradise Valley on up. Paradise Valley is just about balanced, but they dropped 15%. But Paradise Valley yo-yos a lot. So Goodyear, 87. Down here, Buckeye, Maricopa, Queen Creek. That is a buyer's market because that's where all the builders are right now. So the resale homes are competing with new builds. So what we're seeing in the market right now is there aren't any glaring indicators that say prices are coming down rapidly. I am seeing indications that prices are coming down gradually by single digit and by low single digits right now. What will change that? Well, you never know what kind of splat black swan event will come up. But if you were waiting, you can now say, well, based on what I'm seeing, I can only expect maybe 2%, maybe 1% per month as I look through the summer or flat, depending on the city. Looking at Chandler, Fountain Hills, and Avondale, you may not see price reductions at all. Now, keep in mind, there's a difference between the average sales price per square foot and the asking sales price. I think we'll see more reductions in the asking sales price because people are still coming in higher than where they should. They, There's an example. I was uh, at a, a birthday party yesterday, and one of the gentlemen was telling me about these three houses that were down the street from where I was, and he was telling me what one of his neighbors told him one of the houses sold for. Now, I had just looked at the MLS data on that the day before, and his neighbor was way off. Now, he was very confident with his neighbor, what his neighbor told him. So I just, rather than get into a conflict, just nodded my head and go, oh, I mean, it was bad. He says that that one house sold for 650000 He says, unbelievable. It didn't even have that many improvements in it. Can't believe they're getting after that house. And the other one, they're asking way too much. They're asking six and a quarter. Well, one's four ninety nine, and the other one was five twenty. So looking at the actual numbers tells you more than what your neighbor is telling you, I think is what my point is. So look at the data and determine what's going on in that neighborhood because neighbors tend to get just hearsay. Some of them are great. They follow the data and what they're telling you is true. Some of them are way off. But unfortunately, most people price their houses based on what their neighbor told them. Or they find a real estate agent, they interview four of them, and the one that gives them the highest price is the one that they list with. That never works. Well, this agent told me I'd get 520. This one said 560. He said he can get it, so I'm listing with him. Well, guess what? He didn't get it. He did get a lot of buyer leads because he held about 25 open houses there and met all kinds of your neighbors, but you didn't sell your house because it was too much. I also saw a house that was listed in a Facebook group, and she posted, you know, I'm priced correctly, and it's in a great neighborhood, and the house is in great shape. 
why am I not seeing any buyer traffic? Well, one look at the pictures would tell you why. A, the kitchen was outdated. They were asking five hundred and fifty-nine thousand for this house, two thousand square feet. Well, first of all, my radar went out and said that's not very competitive in the town that I was looking at. The living room paint was atrocious. It was some kind of uh, patterned orange paint for lack of picking a different color. The bedrooms were like lime green. Everything about it was unappealing. And yet the agent said, it's priced right. It's in a good neighborhood and it shows well. She had 50 pictures. You don't need 50 pictures. You need 20. And the pictures were not, they were poorly taken. Now, I just sat back and read the comments and people were going, um, it doesn't show well. The kitchen is original. It needs upgrading. The paint, oh my God. Uh, you have way too many pictures. Reshoot it. Have them paint the inside of the house and reshoot it. So she felt it was priced right. So the seller probably said, well, this agent thinks I can get five seventy-five dollars for it. I can't even remember the number now. So she picked them. Well, guess what? Not going to get five seventy-five, dollars and that house needs some work. So do your homework if you're looking at listing your house, because guess what? They're still moving. I just showed you 78% of the homes, the new contracts that are coming up, they're finding buyers. It's slow out there. It's really slow, but it's not dangerously bleak. So it's a calm market right now. And I think we're going to be here for a while. I don't know for sure. I hope we are. So I hope these numbers help you when you're doing some research, trying to figure out if you're going to buy in this area or sell in this area. And again, if you have any questions, I hope you email me at rick at rickhelps.com and sign up for my newsletter. It goes out every Monday morning at 7 a.m. Thanks.